Ospreys. Welcome to another Sunrise edition of Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Deja Borden, here to give you the inside scoop on Inside Swoop. We're here on location at the Internship and Job Fair, hosted here at the Student Union Ballroom. First, Russia is now focusing their aggression toward Ukraine's second largest city. Early Tuesday morning, a 40-mile convoy of tanks were seen and bombs were heard throughout the central square. Videos of the explosion surfaced online, showing the destroying of cities of the city Soviet era administration building and neighborhoods. The president of Ukraine has called this attack a war crime and believes Putin is using unnecessary terror on the residents of Ukraine. Next, a California man killed his three daughters and himself during a court ordered supervised visit with, a, with the girls at a church on Monday evening. According to the Associated Press, gunshots were reported to the police around 5 p.m. When they arrived, they found five people dead. The ages of the girls were between 9 and 13. The fourth victim, police say, is the chaperone of the visit. President Joe Biden is set to give a State of the Union Tuesday night. The speech was originally focused on the state of coronavirus in the country, but with the fast-paced and dangerous war Russia is carrying out in Ukraine, Biden will now address the concerns for U.S. safety. He's expected to talk about the bravery of the Ukrainian people and the benefits of the alliance between the U.S. and the Ukraine military. Lastly, they say he will address how he plans to execute his first term agenda as time, run time runs out for his presidential term. Thanks for your time, Ospreys. That's it for this Sunrise edition of Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Deja Borden. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Hey there, Ospreys. Welcome to a weather edition of Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Haley Jones, here to bring you the top weather news and the local forecast. I'm here on location at the Internship and Job Fair hosted at the School of Communication, hosted at the Student Union Building. Catastrophic flooding along the southeastern coast of Australia claimed eight lives yesterday, while at least 40,000 people were evacuated from their homes in high flood zones. Recent rainfall, which officials describe as astronomical, left students stranded left residents stranded on roofs and bridges until rescue teams could reach them. As a precaution, authorities placed 300,000 more people under an evacuation warning. According to the AP, this is the country's worst flooding in decades. The forecast this morning is partly cloudy and breezy. For most of the day, temperatures will stay in the upper 60s and low 70s. We'll have a partly cloudy evening with temperatures dropping into the lower 50s. If you're headed to the beach today, remember that there's a high rip current in effect until late tonight. Taking a look at this week's forecast, tomorrow will be a sunny day with highs in the 70s. But sunny weather is here to stay for the rest of the week. Through Sunday, sky, through Sunday, sky should be clear and high temperatures should stay in the upper 70s and low 80s. Monday will be partly a cloudy again in the 80s. That does it for this weather edition of Inside Swoop in 90. Have a great day, Ospreys. I'm Haley Jones, and I'll see you next time. Hello, and good morning, Ospreys. I'm here at the Student Union Ballroom at the Internship and Job Fair, hosted by the UNF School of Communication. As you can see behind and next to me, there are dozens of tables set up with employers there excited to meet you all. The event is open until 3 p.m. And now for a Florida edition of Inside Swoop in 90. Derek Jeter is leaving the Miami Marlins after nearly five years of leadership. Jeter, a former all-star from the New York Yankees, is now Miami's CEO and shareholder. Jeter's departure happens amid MLB lockout, which needs to be resolved in order for spring season to begin in March 31st. According to the Associated Press, the Miami Marlins had the fourth worst record over all four seasons Jeter oversaw. Next, according to the Associated Press, Florida Representative Ten Dutch will not be seeking re-election in the fall midterms. Dutch represents southern Florida areas, including Palm Beach and Broward counties. Dutch said he is accepting a CEO offer from the American Jewish Committee in New York City. Dutch pushed for stronger gun control legislation in his county following the Parkland school shooting in his district. And finally, according to the American Library Association, Official, officials, book bans have, quote, reached levels not seen in decades, end quote. Amid Florida's recent Don't Say Gay law, Orange County School Board voted to remove graphic novel, quote, Gender Queer, a memoir from shelves. According to the Associated Press, 
Stefana Farrell, a mother in the school district, founded the Florida Freedom to Read Project, which focuses on challenges, challenging bans on books in the state. Thanks for tuning in, Ospreys, and we'll be back soon with another update. Hello and good morning, Ospreys. I'm here at the Student Union Ballroom at the Internship and Job Fair. Um, as you can see, next to me, there are uh, a lot, lot of tables around uh, offering various positions and jobs for interns. Um, the event is open until 3 p.m., and now I'll give you the sports update. The MLB and player bargaining session has been extended to 5 p.m. today after 16 hours of negotiations yesterday. The sides have agreed that the postseason will be expanded to 12 teams instead of the 14 the MLB initially asked for. The two parties disagree on the financial side, with the players' union asking for a base salary raise from $570,000 to $675,000 a year. This is the closest regular games have been to getting cut since 2002. Next, the Bruins beat the Kings 7-0, and an impressive, an impressive four of those goals were made by Jake DeBrusque. This was DeBrusque's first hat trick, but he couldn't have won without his goalie, Jeremy Swayman, stopping 34 shots on goal, earning the fifth shutout of his career. After DeBrusque scored his third goal 21 minutes into the game, fans threw their hats onto the ice to celebrate his achievement. The Bruins hope to continue their West Coast winning streak, and with six victories under their belt so far, it's looking good for Boston fans. And finally, Washington State beat Oregon State 103-97 on Monday in an overtime victory that was Oregon State's 15th straight loss. Washington State took the lead with six and a half minutes on the clock, thanks to Michael Flowers' three-pointer. Michael Flowers put up 27 points, and Mohamed Vie put up 19 and led them to overtime, where they kept the lead for the final two minutes of the game. Washington State has two regular season games left where it will face Oregon State again. Thanks for tuning in, Ospreys. I'm River Cordova. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Hello, and good afternoon, Ospreys. I'm Jessica Frush here at the Job Fair and Internship at Student Union Ballroom, hosted by the School of Communication. As you can see behind me, there are tables with employers set up that are eager to meet students. Now let's get into the international update. In Geneva, the invasion of Ukraine has put Switzerland's neutrality to the test, as well as reputation for a safe haven for assets of Russia's riches. Following Moscow's military action, the Swiss executive branch stopped short of announcing sanctions against Russia. The Federal Council chose to fall in line with the European Union and, according to the Associated Press, pledged that Russian individuals and companies hit with UA sanctions won't be allowed to invade Switzerland. While the country does want to safeguard their role as diplomatic go-between, the government does, not, does represent interests of former Soviet Republic Georgian in Moscow. Ukrainians saw on Tuesday what other cities may become if Russia's invasion is not countered. The military strike hit the center of Ukraine's second largest city, damaging symbolic Soviet-era regional administration building. An emergency official said bodies of at least six people had been pulled and another 20 were injured. It is not clear on what type of weapon was used or the total of people that were killed. However, Ukrainian President Vladimir Slenskin said there were dozens of casualties and called the attack, quote, frank, undisgusted terror. Nobody will forgive. Nobody will forget. Lastly, in Poland, NATO's chief said Tuesday that despite Russia's threats with nuclear weapons, the, allow the al alliance does not see a need to change their own weapons alert level. Secretary General Jen Skolzenberg spoke to the Associated Press saying, quote, while we will always do what is needed to protect and defend our allies, but we don't think that there is any need now to change the alert levels. Also, according to AP, Stolenberg stressed that Russia has signed deals agreeing that nuclear war cannot be won and should not be fought. Well, Osprey, that's it for this edition of International News. I'm Jessica Frisch, and I'll see you next time.